A jury at the Old Bailey has cleared a man of the murder of PC Keith Blakelock during the Broadwater Farm riots in North London 29 years ago. Nicholas Jacobs, who was 16 at the time, denied murdering the officer who was stabbed 43 times while on duty in Tottenham that night. At the Old Bailey, the jury heard from three witnesses who said that they saw Mr Jacobs take part. But his defence team questioned their credibility, as our correspondent Robert Hall reports now. On the pavement outside the Old Bailey, those who had supported Nicky Jacobs gathered to mark the end of a five-week trial which they say should never have gone to court. Mr Jacobs had protested his innocence from the outset. His supporters included Winston Silcott and Mark Braithwaite, who were cleared of PC Blakelock's murder back in 1991. This case was as close as you can come to a legal lynching that we have ever seen. The, the case was built on the testimony of three lie witnesses who told lies through their teeth. This story began on a North London estate known locally as The Farm. Broadwater Farm, a thousand flats linked by overhead walkways and on that October night in 1985, completely out of control. Rising tension between the community and the police had finally boiled over. Officers tried and failed to contain several hundred people who attacked them with petrol bombs and other missiles. PC Keith Blakelock was with colleagues called to protect firefighters on the first floor of the complex, but they were driven back down the stairwell. As Keith Blakelock ran out of this car park, he tripped over a low wall and he fell. His colleagues were powerless to reach him as he was surrounded by a crowd. He was punched, kicked and stabbed. At his post-mortem, he was found to have more than 40 wounds to his body. And you can see their arms moving up and moving down and moving up and moving down and um, with machetes and, and knives just, just cut into his body. And it, although it was from a distance, I knew exactly what was happening. From the outset, there were questions over the subsequent investigation. The crime scene inadequately protected. Suspects interviewed without lawyers present. Arrests which the community claimed were prompted by internal pressure rather than hard evidence. In 2004, there were 14 further arrests, but only Nicholas Jacobs was charged. The case against Jacobs depended on three anonymous witnesses. Two had received financial assistance from police all had been granted immunity. It's really tricky simply because we've got no forensics, no CCTV from those days, and the only witnesses to a crime like that are people involved in rioting. We have not incentivised anybody financially to give evidence in this trial. That is not accurate. Tonight, Keith Blakelock's widow and his three sons said they were sad and disappointed at the verdict. The events of that evening in 1985 hang heavy over those who believe justice must be done and those who are convinced that old prejudices will taint that investigation. Robert Hall, BBC News, at the Old Bailey. Well, tonight the defence barrister who represented Nicholas Jacobs welcomed the verdict and questioned why the case had been brought to court. It's the third time the Metropolitan Police have carried out inquiries into PC Blakelock's murder. Our home editor Mark Easton looks at some of the obstacles that they faced. For almost three decades, the murder of PC Blakelock has been an open wound on the Metropolitan Police. It is a massively important case for us, a spokesman admitted today. But yet again, what detectives call the investigative challenge has proved beyond them. There was no CCTV, no forensic evidence to speak of, and no witnesses of good character. As one senior officer put it, the wonderful old lady with the perfect memory walking her dog was not there because it was the middle of a riot. It was decided the only way to win justice for a colleague and the Blakelock family was to divide the mob that fateful night into two groups. Today's acquittal can be traced back to a controversial decision by the Director of Public Prosecutions to give immunity to those who'd only kicked the constable if they gave evidence against those who'd stabbed him. Under witness protection, police paid for hotels, meals, some phone bills and travel costs, on one occasion a car repair bill, and the cost of an air ticket for a witness who'd missed his flight. And when plans for a trial were dropped in 1994, witnesses were then given a reward for their help. 
for Winston Silcott, who was eventually acquitted after being jailed for the Blakelock murder at a previous trial, the payments were a sign of police desperation. Such a case should never come to court in the first place. I mean, how could you um, take testimony of um, weaknesses, yeah, who are being paid, unreliable, right, put people in a frame who could never been there? It's just a total joke. Some people will say that, but not the majority. This afternoon in Tottenham, the borough commander told me police had a repairing job to do with many black people in the area. The way we've actually policed young black men has been one of slightly more aggressive, slightly more dispassionate, and, and those things build up a perception that, you know, we're an institution who dislike young black men, who dislike the black community, but we need to get into a position where we behave like professionals. The 2011 riots began in Tottenham with an inquiry concluding that police trust and credibility among young black people here was close to zero. Tensions are still not far below the surface. Nobody here wants to trust the police. No, no trust for the police at all. Why, so, why not? Because they lie to make themselves look good. If we make a report, half the time the crime is not solved. They yeah. send you a feedback letter and that's it. Yeah. Although police insist the Blake Clock case still remains open, after a series of investigations and reviews costing many millions, it seems unlikely the constable's killers will ever now be brought to justice. Mark Easton, BBC News, Tottenham. Now, in the past hour, it's been confirmed that Lord Miners... Uh...